Do you feel ignorant because you don't know numbers? You don't know which one go which way and they got all these marks and things on them? I know, honey, it's hard. But there is a solution. Fort Ben Tutoring. And now here go Mr. Whit. Explain math to us, Mr. Whit. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Whit with Fort Ben Tutoring. And today's tutorial is going to be about subtracting polynomials. Let's take a look at it. Now, in problem number one, we have 5x to the fourth power minus 2x to the fourth power. When you are subtracting polynomials, ladies and gentlemen, you're just combining like terms. And like terms, all those terms that have the exact same variables with the exact same exponents on those variables. It's a big part of simplifying algebraic expressions. So, you definitely need to know how to do that. Well, here we have two terms. Yeah, and they have the same variable with the same exponent on that variable. So, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on those coefficients of 5 and negative 2. In other words, combine them. In other words, subtract them. 5 minus 2 is going to give me 3 x to the fourth power. And when we have our result here, ladies and gentlemen, notice that I didn't change the variable, nor did I change the exponent on that variable. The only time you change the exponent on the variable is when you're multiplying and dividing like bases. That's it. So here we're subtracting, obviously. So therefore, you don't mess with the variable at all and its exponent. Leave it alone. This is the answer. 3x to the fourth power. Yep. Let's move on to the next problem here, problem number two. For problem number two, I have the polynomial 4x to the second power minus 2x minus 6x squared minus 6. So many times, many authors, professors, teachers, instructors will want you to write your answer in descending order of the variable, meaning you start with the variable with the highest exponent and work your way down from there. So the terms with the highest exponent in this problem is 4x squared and negative 6x squared. We're going to combine those first, all right? So 4x squared minus 6x squared, combining those coefficients, the numbers in front of the variables, 4 minus 6 is negative 2. So I'll end up with negative 2x squared. Remember that variable and exponent stays the same. Then I don't have a like term for this x to the first power term. That negative 2x is just by itself. So bring it down. You'll have negative 2x there. Same thing applies to your negative 6. You do not have any other terms to combine with negative 6, so you'll bring it down, and there you have it. Notice that our terms start out with an exponent of 2, then this x is to the first power, and you can say that that negative 6 is x to the 0 power. So this is my result. That's it. In descending order of x, ladies and gentlemen, that's the answer. Done and done. That was problem number 2. On to the next one. In problem number three here, we have the quantity of 3x plus 8 minus the quantity of 3x minus 5. Well, anytime you have parentheses, ladies and gentlemen, you can think of using the distributive property. You can think of multiplying these things out prior to combining any like terms you may have. What I mean by that is, technically, you have 1 times 3x plus 8. So all you have to do is just drop these parentheses for this first binomial here. So this is just going to be 3x plus 8, as it is. All right? Now, for the second term here, that second binomial, we have a negative in front. And that negative is the same thing as multiplying by negative 1. So we'll be distributing, all right, my favorite property in the world. The distributive property, I have my arrows popping. So the negative here will be changing the signs of everything inside of that parentheses. In other words, a negative times a positive will give me a negative 3x here. And a negative times a negative is a positive 5. So this is what I end up with thus far. Then I'll be combining my like terms. I see I have x's that I can combine, right? So this 3x minus 3x, well, that's just 0x. In other words, these terms are just going to cancel out here. All right. Finally, I'll be combining 8 plus 5, and that gives me a result of 13. And this is my answer. All right. Put it in the red box for you. There you have it. That was problem number three. In problem number four, we have the following problem. We have 8a minus the quantity of 3a plus 4 minus the quantity of 5a minus 3. So I'm going to start by getting rid of these parentheses by distributing. That's right, getting these arrows popping once again. So I'll be bringing down 8a. Remember, the negative on the outside simply changes all the signs of the terms inside of the parentheses. So this will become negative 3a minus 4. Then, distributing that negative in that last set of parentheses, we'll have negative 5a plus 3. In other words, that negative times that positive gave me a negative result here. And then a negative 1, technically, times negative 3 gives you a positive 3. 
okay? From there, we'll be combining our like terms, right? So I'm going to start with the terms with the variables first, all right? Always start with the terms with the variables first. So I'll be combining 8a, negative 3a, and negative 5a together. I know that 8a minus 3a is 5a. And I also know that 5a minus 5a is 0, so once again, these terms just cancel out here. You'll be left with negative 4 plus 3, which is negative 1, and that's the answer. Red box, there it is. You saw it. We're on number 5 now. Now, on problem number 5, we have the quantity of 6x squared minus 4x to the fourth power minus x minus the quantity of 3x to the fourth power minus 4x squared plus 5. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be dropping these parentheses because they're getting on my nerves. So we're going to bring down 6x squared minus 4x to the fourth power minus x. And I'll be distributing this negative into the second set of parentheses here, just like that. So the negative will change all the signs of the terms inside the parentheses. So let's do just that. We'll have a negative 3x to the fourth power now. A negative times a negative is a positive, so that gives me a positive 4x squared. And finally, a negative times a positive gives me a negative 5 as a result. From here, we'll end up with the following. We'll have the x to the fourth powers being combined first. So remember, always start with the terms with the highest exponent. In this problem, we have negative 4x to the fourth power. We have negative 3x to the fourth power. So we'll get negative 7x to the fourth power, knowing that like signs add, and you keep the sign of the largest number. Mm -hmm. Then I'll be combining my x to the second power terms. So 6x squared plus 4x squared, that gives me a result of 10x squared. So this is going to be plus 10x squared. All right. Then, I don't have any other like terms for this negative x to combine with. So just bring down the negative x. Same thing applies to this negative 5, right? You don't have any other numbers that can combine with negative 5, so bring it down. There you go. So that's going to be my answer. Just like that. Negative 7x to the fourth power plus 10x squared minus x minus 5. Just like that. All right. Next, you have problem number 6. In problem number six, we have Z's, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. These funny-looking characters here, those are my Z's. And if you tell anybody that they suck, I will find you. Okay? So anyway, we have the quantity of Z to the fifth power plus 3Z to the second power plus 2Z minus the quantity of 4Z to the fifth power plus 2Z to the second power minus 5Z. Once again, I'm going to start out by dropping these parentheses, especially the first set of parentheses. They're just not needed. All right. So I'm going to bring down Z to the fifth power plus 3z to the second power plus 2z. Then I'm going to distribute this negative into the second set of parentheses. That's right, I got my arrows popping. So I'm bringing down negative 4z to the fifth power. This becomes negative 2z to the second power, and this becomes a positive 5z. All right? Yeah, that last z just sucked, so let's fix it. All right, that's a much better Z. That might be the best Z in this entire video. Right there. Let's just stare at it for a second. Okay, good. All right. Then I'll be starting with the term with the highest exponent, and that's Z to the fifth power. So I'll be combining those. I have 1Z to the fifth power minus 4Z to the fifth power. This gives me a negative 3Z to the fifth power, just like that. Then, combining your z squared terms, I have a positive 3z squared and a negative 2z squared. This gives me a positive z squared. See, you don't need to write the 1 in front of that, ladies and gentlemen. You'll just be writing z squared. The 1 is redundant. It's not necessary, so don't write it. Then, we'll be finishing this up by combining 2z and a positive 5z here. So 2z plus 5z, that gives me a positive 7z. And this is my answer, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. That's it. That's what you end up with. Negative 3z to the fifth power plus z squared plus 7z. That was problem number six. All right, let's move on to the next one. Moving on to the next problem, we have problem number seven now. In problem number seven, we have two times the quantity of 12y squared minus 8y plus 6 
minus 4 times the quantity of 3y squared minus 4y plus 2. Well, anytime you have a value other than 1 in front of your parentheses, you can simply distribute it. All right, so I'm going to get my arrows popping here because that's what I do. It's my favorite property. And then I'm going to distribute this negative 4. So notice how I circled that to remind me that I'll be distributing a negative in that second set of parentheses. Let's see what happens when we do that. We'll have 2 times 12y squared. That gives me 24 y squared. Then 2 times negative 8y is going to be a negative 16y. 2 times 6 is always 12. Then distributing negative 4 times 3y squared, multiplying that out, you'll end up with negative 12y to the second power. Negative 4 times negative 4y is going to be a positive 16y. And then finally negative 4 times 2, that's negative 8. Mm -hmm. So this is the result after distributing, all right? From there, we're going to be combining our like terms. So I'm going to start with the terms with the highest exponent. So that's that y squared term. Then subtracting 24y squared minus 12y squared gives me 12 y squared. Combining my y terms here, all right, you have a negative 16y and a positive 16y. Well, these terms are opposites of each other, so they're going to cancel out when you combine them. That's right. 16 minus 16 is still 0. Then finally, we have 12 minus 8. Mm -hmm. 12 minus 8 is 4. So this is going to be a positive 4 right here. I'm going to put a box around my answer. And we're done with that problem number 7, ladies and gentlemen. That's the end result of that. Let's go ahead and move on to problem number 8 here. With problem number 8, we have 3p times the quantity of 8p squared minus 5p minus 5p squared times the quantity of 3p squared minus 2p plus 4. We're distributing. I'm excited. I'm about to get my arrows popping, ladies and gentlemen. So here, with these arrows popping here, I'm going to circle that negative 5p squared there. Mm -hmm. And the result of that is going to be the following. We have 3p times 8p squared. This gives me 24p to the third power. Then distributing 3p times negative 5p, this is a negative 15p squared. From there, I'll be distributing negative 5p squared times 3p squared to give me a negative 15p to the fourth power. See, this p squared times that p squared, you add the exponents together to get p to the fourth power. Then distributing negative 5p squared times negative 2p gives me a positive 10p cubed. All right? That's supposed to be a 3. Oh, yeah. There you go. That's much better. Then finally, you have a negative 5p squared times 4. That's a negative 20p squared. Just like that. Oh, you couldn't see it. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. All right. All right. Next, 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 next. Calm down. Calm down. You'll end up writing your answer in descending order of p. My term with the highest exponent is p to the fourth power. I don't have any light terms for this p to the fourth power, so you just bring it down. It'll just be a negative 15p to the fourth power. Then I'll be able to combine my p to the third power terms. So that's 24p cubed plus 10p cubed. This gives me a positive 34p cubed, just like that. All right? Then, oh, you don't like that plus sign? Okay. All right, you don't have to scream it at me. All right, let me, there you go. See, is that plus sign better for you? Thank you. Appreciate that. Then let's go ahead and combine the p squared terms. So I have negative 15p squared and I have a negative 20p squared. So combining those two together, you'll end up with negative 35p squared. And this is your answer for problem number eight, ladies and gentlemen, just like that. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's the end of that problem. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. And you'll do the following in problem number nine. Let's check that out. We have the quantity of 6m to the fourth power minus 3m squared plus m minus the quantity of 2m cubed plus 5m squared plus 4m plus the quantity of m squared minus m. So what we'll do in this problem, ladies and gentlemen, is we'll recognize that you have subtraction and addition going on here, and we'll definitely be getting rid of the parentheses first. So the first set of parentheses is the same thing. It's one times itself. So you'll just end up with 6m to the fourth power minus 3m squared plus m. In your second set of parentheses, however, you'll be distributing that negative. So I'll get my arrows popping, and you'll bring down negative 2m cubed minus 5m squared minus 4m. All right? In that last set of parentheses, you have 1 times m squared minus m, which is just m squared minus m. So we just brought that down. All right? And once again, this plus sign sucks, so let's fix it. 
There we go. All right, much better now. So after you distribute, drop your parentheses, we're going to now combine like terms and write our answer in descending order of M. All right, so the first term, the term with the highest exponent, is going to be 6M to the fourth power. Mm -hmm. Then my next term with the highest exponent would be the M cubed term. So I'll be bringing down a negative 2M cubed. From there, I'll be combining my m squared terms. So I have negative 3m squared, I have negative 5m squared, and I have m squared. So negative 3 and negative 5 will combine to give me negative 8, and then negative 8 plus this 1m squared leaves me with negative 7m squared as a result. Okay? From there, I notice that I have a positive m, a negative 4m, and a negative m here. So 1 minus 4 is negative 3. Negative 3 minus 1 gives me negative 4m as a result. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is my answer to problem number 9. I'm going to go ahead and put a box around my answer because that's what I like to do. All right, so let's move on to our next problem, problem number 10. In problem number 10, we have negative 2 times the quantity of 8x cubed plus x minus 3 plus the quantity of 2x cubed plus x squared minus the quantity of 4x squared plus 3x. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start by distributing, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to get my arrows popping for this negative 2. That's right. And in the midst of this, I'll also be distributing this negative here. Okay, so let's get to popping these arrows. We have negative 2 times 8x cubed. That gives me negative 16x cubed. We have negative 2 times x. That's negative 2x. We have negative 2 times negative 3. That's a positive 6. Anything inside this parentheses, you just bring it down because 1 times anything is itself. So this is going to be a positive 2x cubed, a positive x squared, and then we'll distribute the negative. Anytime you're multiplying by a negative, ladies and gentlemen, you're just going to change the sign here. So a negative times a positive gives me a negative 4x squared. A negative times a positive gives me a negative 3x. And this is the result you should see after you distribute. Once I've distributed, I'm going to combine like terms. And I'm going to write my answer in descending order of my variable x. So that means I'm starting with the terms with the highest exponent and working my way down. I have negative 16x cubed. I have a positive 2x cubed. Negative 16 plus 2, that's a negative 14x cubed. Then I'll be combining my x squared terms. I have 1x squared and negative 4x squared right here. So 1 minus 4, that gives me a negative 3x squared. Mm -hmm, just like that. Then I'll be combining my x to the first power terms. You have negative 2x and you have a negative 3x right here. So negative 2 and negative 3, that'll combine to give you a negative 5x. Finally, I don't have any like terms for my 6. Mm -hmm, nothing to combine with that. So you'll just bring down that positive 6 as is. And this is going to be your answer for problem number 10. Here's that red box you were waiting on. I know you were waiting on it. I know you were waiting on it. So there it is. Okay? There it is. Calm down. So, ladies and gentlemen, this will conclude subtracting polynomials. This is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring, FBT. Go ahead and subscribe, ladies and gentlemen, to the YouTube channel. We really appreciate that. And as always, please rate, comment, and, of course, subscribe. And if you're able, please donate. Your donations help us bring you more free math videos. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Peace. We certainly hope you enjoyed today's presentation by Fort Bend Tutoring. Did you understand the program? Would you like to rate us or give us some feedback or subscribe to us? You could do all that on tutormemath.net.